Welcome back to the Hoops Temple Podcast. Y'all know me, Nathan Schwartz. Joining me in Sacramento after his refreshing 10-minute break, Aaron Schroeder. Good to see you, man. I wish you didn't say that. I was going to say like, and we're wearing the same shirts. How do we do it? How do we plan this so well? We adjust our camera angles slightly. I shrunk it down so that my cat's not on screen, but uh, still got my bookcase in the background. But I'm enjoying this new kind of setup. I got a nice window to my right. I got, you know, got, got to figure out what to do with this this like sloped wall here. It's just kind of weird. Okay, there's right, something. Maybe. I could see some something going on there. I need like a small shelf that just like fits here, and yeah. But we're back. We're ranking out. 376 to 400 at the end of this day we will have the 400th greatest basketball player of all time and it will be doc rivers is that true are you doing that to me i think there's a chance that it will be doc rivers (laughs) (laughs) oh my god (laughs) yeah this is the curse we did not do Ralph Beard last time. Okay. Or Frankie Bryan. We did Hawkins nope. and Malona. All right. Nope. Just I, I, organizing my things. I shunted off the, the people. If you go full screen, you can see the list behind me. Uh, the top 15 remaining at each position, uh, which, man, we're going to need to start rediscussing some point guards pretty damn soon. Yeah, uh, seriously. Not anticipate that at all. Yeah. Yeah. I thought I thought we would be good to like 450. Um, and, and then we could start, you know, ad hoc throwing in, Hey, how do you feel about, uh, D'Angelo Russell? No, we're, yeah. we're going to need to do that much sooner. Um, have we still but, not done Zajunas Ogaskis? We still have not done Zajunas Ogaskis. There he is. Uh, There's my pick throwing it out there. You like big Z? <laughs> I like big Z. All right. Behind him is the nominations. That'd be Nick Van Exel from the point guard spot, Ralph Beard from the shooting guard spot, Kelly Tripuka is our small forward, Bob Boozer is our power forward, and Zajunas Ogalskis is our center. Ogalskis was the top one for a while. We weren't as into it upon review. Now, why why didn't you like it as much? Um, I felt it was briefer and a lower peak than I thought. I don't think I can make the strongest case that Zajunas Ogalskis is a man who... Um, like raises your defensive ceiling. I don't think that he um, is, is super great on offense and so either. I, I think he's good on both ends, but I don't think that having him on the floor is going to make you necessarily better on either one. I'm I'm still not opposed to having him fall a little bit farther. I really like Mike Thompson. I really like Andrew Bynum. Um, Andrew Bogut's illegal screens founded a dynasty as a, a phrase I know you're it did. fond of saying. Um, I, I don't know. I just, I couldn't quite figure out what my case was for Zildjian Sogalskis other than he's LeBron's like number two guy for a long time. And he punched Paul Pierce. Hey and man, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good. Hey, the, honestly, the most impressive thing with Sogalskis is that he misses his entire rookie season with a foot injury, plays a full season, misses an entire other season with a foot injury, misses an entire other season with a foot injury, then plays just 24 games in 01, and then manages to play until he was 35 at seven foot three, 240. He should have been done in 2002. Incredible that he played as long. Incredible that he even made the two all-star teams that he did. Um, you got to go watch some 98 Ilgowskis highlights. He's like super fluid, wage. He kind of kind of more of a, a statue i'd say it, with like lebron kind of a spot up shooter out in the in the long mm-hmm. two he's like him and i think him and sean kemp are on the same Cavs team um oh, gumbies yeah him and kemp in, in 98 um and it's oh. like the last good camp year they win 47 games and make the playoffs like kind of really exciting team um kind of completely lost in time because the lockout just kills kemp and injuries just ruin ogalskis but i still You're- like it Go ahead. You said Sean Kemp, and for some reason, my mind went to Sean Bradley. And I'm like, I can't picture them being on this court at the same time. But if if you had the two of them, that is uh, very little (laughs) mobility and a shit ton of length. That's true. But, I mean, the Cavs were, that Cavs team is the best defense in the NBA. It's like back when Sean Kemp was still really good defensively. Um, there's something to that. Like, I feel like that season kind of gets put away, but I, I like that season. It's probably one of his better years. 
Um, do you want to do it? It's fine. It's fine. I, I wouldn't hate doing it here. Uh, my interest is in the guard selection. Um, neither Nick Van Axel or Ralph Beard, but I think they both have a lot of good guys right behind them that I would be very interested in talking about. If not now, then very soon. And who's that? Um, so I think we talked about Frankie Bryan, mm -hmm. a 50s player, but fantastic big 50s player. Um, when all the leagues merged, the first season of the ABA, or first season of the NBA, sorry, um, he didn't come from the NBL, or at least the team wasn't originally in the NBL. They might have joined the last year, but he came from the Gosh, where did he come from? Was it Anderson? Tries to he came from a team that shouldn't have been playing in professional basketball, but basically got into the league because of him. And he's fantastic. And he makes an all NBA team. And he's just a blur. He's lightning fast. Um, he might have been one of the first guys to be nicknamed the Flash. I'm not sure if I've got hmm. that right. But in Tri City, they're terrible, but he's good. Um and he leads them to be the number one team in their division, which is also a super weird thing. They do three divisions instead of two conferences. Um, and then the team that wins their like four team divisional playoffs, uh, whichever team has the best record gets up by. So like conference finals, they basically have two conference finals teams play. And then the third one just gets to buy really weird playoff stuff. But I, I think at this point, none of these guys are, are, Team's no. first options. None of these guys are team second options. How do options. these guys fit in on good teams? That's who we're looking at. How do they fit on good teams? Let's do Ilgauskas and, and then um and, and then, then Frankie. Yeah, well then we'll do Beard. We'll do Ralph Beard. We'll we'll toss him in there. That's um, that's kind of where I'm at is uh, you know, Frankie and Ralph, they have brief careers, but uh, we talked about a lot these guys a lot in the previous episode, and so if you're yeah. a little um that is that is why we're kind of glossing over it. Um, no harm, no foul. With the next guy, Bob Boozer has fallen quite a bit. I'm just trying to kind of catch up on guys we had kind of high, maybe that have fallen too far. Mm -hmm. um, let's lock him in there at 379. 379. I, I wouldn't hate having him fall a little bit farther. I think we've got some other really nice 70s guys coming up soon. Um, like, are you going to tell me? I guess Boozer is a little bit more 60s than 70s. Yeah, all right, we can lock him in 79. Yeah. 79. All um, right. This is where I'm kind of interested in just just shooting guards, point guards, uh, a couple of centers. What do you think? Think about this run from Don Ole really down to Jeff Petrie. I think they're all going to make it. Uh, they don't have to all make it right now, but I think those, how many names are we looking at here? Six names. Those six names are all locks in my mind. So. Okay. Did I have them? Seven names. I had Seven I had down locks. to Sloan on the shooting guards list. Mm. Mm. So. Leaving off a man that Michael Jordan called the greatest shooter. <laughs> he did. He did say that. He said he had the the well, he's, yeah the best the prettiest jump shot. And this is, um, well, I mean, I am one spot short because I would keep changing stuff, but with I, I'm I'm interested in all oh, you get the six all star appearances. He's he's in a Hall of Famer. Um, mm -hmm. Let's throw him in. It, so he survived the '60s Pistons. So just to to talk about all a little bit makes the five straight all star teams gets one later um, from '63 to '67. 19 points per game, uh, three and a half boards, three and a half. Assist. It's a lot of sub 500 basketball all out there. Like the the best his teams were is, is like 38 wins. Um, his highest scoring seasons it's 38 and it's 20. But he also is a decent little playoff riser. Um, it, between 62 and 66, he plays in six playoff series, averages 40 minutes a night, 24 points per game, basically five boards and three assists. Yeah. 
I love it. No, that's it's a great call. I think the next guy should be on the point guards list. I think we should snag Brian Taylor. He's been waiting for a while. Uh, can I? What? Go ahead. Can I interest you in Don Buse? I know it's a ways down, but they mm. play at the they they play the same time, and I think I think we just kind of missed it. Um, I think Boost was better. I think Boost Boost was better, or and he um he talks about getting compared to Jerry Sloan, Sloan um with his defense, with his steals, with his playmaking, um yeah, it, like people compare him to Sloan and Walt Frazier, or um and, and when the merger kind of happens, I think he has a little bit more graceful of transition into the NBA. Leads the NBA in uh, assists per game and steals per game in yeah, 77. Does. It's a big jump for Booz. It's a big jump. Um, it is, but I think I think we just go straight Booz, Taylor. Uh, Melcioni. Melcioni. Thank you. Man, perfect. Um, just three ABA guys. I, I The more I looked back on it, because Taylor and Melcioni, Taylor takes over from Melcioni after or um, his decline with the Nets. We went back and forth on on kind of who's the team's better with Taylor. That's probably because Irving's better. Melcioni might be a little bit individually better, but the team's not as good. And it, it, I don't think there's much separation here in these guys. Yeah, nah, absolutely. Okay. So I think the next guy should be AC Green. I feel pretty good about that. You get the three rings. You get the Iron Man streak, the crazy longevity. Feel good about it? I mean, it's fine. (laughs) You've got to be enthusiastic about these players. We're reaching the top 400. You're not going to get superstars. How do they fit in in a winning team? AC Green plays good defense. He plays in every game. He gets a lot of rebounds. You never have to worry about him. You're also never going to get, you know, anything great you're not gonna you're not gonna have the ac green hits 12 of 15 shots and walks away with 30 points in a night um has he done that though we should double check that he also is uh, is what 18 time first team all virgin kept his virginity throughout his entire career devout uh very devout to his faith yeah sure what are, are you are you doubting that he <laughs> I think we fought about this already. I, Let me check my sticky yes. notes. <laughs> we, we have fought about this. this he totally um, come on, dude. It totally was. All right. Do you do you want to know AC Green's career high? 27. If I put the over under uh actually uh, 35. Yeah, wow. Well, see. Do you Shows want, you, huh? Do you want to do his playoff career high? 27. Under 25. Ah, okay. All right. My my next do you, guy. Do you want to guess that. what team? Do you want to guess what team he scored his playoff career high on? Suns. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm AC Green Lord. Right. Okay. I actually had the next power forward, Jack Coleman, up next. Um okay. He wins two titles. It is in the 50s. Um, he's 13 rebounds a night and 10 boards a game on the 51 Royals. Um, he's playing more of a backup role on the 58 Hawks. He makes, um, the 57 finals as well with the Hawks averaging 33 minutes a night for it's for the fifties to play in 21 playoff series. It's a lot They get to make the playoffs every single season and then win a couple ones as well. Um, because it's not. There's a lot of buys. The playoffs are very short. And so it's pretty high levels of, of mm-hmm. winning. Um, he's also just a very good rebounder. Um, and pa- I'd say passer as well for the power forward spot, getting upwards of like 3.9 assists per game. Um, he placed in the top 10 for rebounds per game four times, which is which is really quite good. I, I want to say this. If we're going to go 50s players, I'd like to give the nod to Al Servi and Buddy Jeanette who are really mm. kind of more 40s right. guys and then get merged into the league. Um, but they're defining 
in features. Al Servi would go on to coach for years and be one of the, the influential figures in early NBA history. He was also known for his defensive presence, um, you know, really helping out or taking away things from big men as just post player. And Buddy Jeanette was like player, coach, all star, a uh, little bit of everything. I think for the Bullets, wins a title as uh, it's like him and Connie Simmons, who mm-hmm. we have Connie Simmons down here. I I would also say that if we're going to start doing 50 guys, I, I think we need to have Connie Simmons over Jack Coleman. Okay, let's let, let's do that. That's totally fine. Um, with Servi, he's uh, he wins the NBL championship in 46. Three-time All-NBL first team and second team in 46. He's the NBL scoring champion in 47, um, all before the NBL merges with the BAA and becomes the NBA. And so if you look at his Basque reference page, you're not going to find much. Look up Al Servi NBL stats. There's a whole other page for his stuff. Um, and you can see the extent of his career and why we like him so much. Um, great defensive guard. He's, he's always uh, the prime defensive matchup for sure. So we have... Connie Simmons coming up next, or do you want to just hang on to both those guys and start I, getting the Ricky I, Pierce's, Kelly Tripukas of the world in there? Yeah, I think that's that's a little bit better or to do. Um, yeah, uh, and and just a, a quote from his teammates, Buddy Jeanette's teammates. It's uh, Paul the Bear Hoffman talking about with the the Bullets Championship. It's just straight up, we owe that title to Buddy. Um, Wayne Embry recall or not. Yeah. I'm not sure which Embry this is. I think it's Wayne, but I didn't don't have that written down. R- recalls kind of the play by play of the 48 title where Buddy s- steals the ball from Carl Braun three times in a row, t- goes down and scores. Or is to, to make this comeback when the Knicks had an eight point lead with two minutes left. I think that that level of stardom um, adjusted for era pushed back because of the fifties. Mm -hmm. I think that belongs in this place. Well, let's do that. So we have Jeanette at 386. Yep. And then I had, let's do, uh, this is the word I had. I had Kelly Tripuka, Jalen Rose, and Ricky Pierce. Okay. I can live with that. What, what, what's your defining differentiating factors between these guys? Other than we just have Tripuka above Rose. I feel like Rose's career is just slightly disappointing. I, I do think we get to see Tripuka utilized effectively. He gets these high scoring seasons. They win playoff games where Rose, like, I don't think the league was really sure what he was. He comes in as this, like, a basically a six, eight point guard. That's what he would, he wouldn't bring in the ball up in today's game. Um, he's drafted to Denver late nineties, Denver, not a great place to be. Um, when he gets to the, gets to the Pacers, he has his, his most improved season. They finally, I think they're utilizing him really well. He averages 40, 42 minutes a night, 21, four and four, basically on the way to the finals. And you're like, all right, like he, he's here. Like this is Jalen Rose's ascension. And then it's just not as great when he ends up kind of bouncing around the league to finish his career kind of unceremoniously. And I feel like it never really materialized in, in the way that it did for Tripuga. Then can I ask? Let's do Ricky. Let's do Tripuka at three eighty seven. Okay. Ricky Pierce then three eighty eight. And, and let's then just I maybe think... hold off on Rose for a second. Okay. Then I definitely figured out how to use how to use uh, Pierce like multiple six man beer awards. Super like, six man. Yeah. So they had a they had that yeah. niche carved out for sure. I, I mean I like Rose and he should be on this because of like. Oh, the way he played in a finals run gets you in the top 400. It just does. I'm sorry. Um, well, after Absolutely. that, I, I had Rose, I had Coleman, I had, and then I had John Starks. That's that's what I was going to say. Is like maybe, maybe we just slip Starks in there. Maybe consider Paul Pressey, Jerry Sloan, Brian Winters. Not, not like Rose falling back five spots behind those guys is that, that big of a difference. Like these guys are all very similar in my mind. Um, but Starks has his clear piece on the Knicks. Um, the Knicks are a Starks missed jump shot away from a title. 
I do find it funny looking back on him where people will comment that he has as many flagrant fouls as like the enforcers of the era, the Charles Oakleys, uh, for just being a tough guy. But he is one of the first really high volume shooters. Uh, in 95, he shot 143 more three point attempts than Reggie Miller. That's uh, basically two a game more. Or in that. That opens things up. That is impactful. That is uh, the Knicks' slow grinding offense. It's not like he's great at shooting them, but it it does really help. It was he was a flamethrower for the the nineties, man. Um, okay, I want to mention Mike Mitchell. I'm not sure if you had him. I, I think we should have him on here. It's career twenty points tonight, and the Spurs are good. They're ma- they are making the the playoffs six times throughout his career. Um, they win two playoff series. He averages. 26 and 10 on 54 percent shooting against the lakers in the 83 conference finals like he has good playoff moments i think the one assist per game he is like the statistically the biggest black hole on on god's earth um at this point dude gets 20 a night you, you can't hurt me with the other stuff okay does that that matter more to you than jerry sloan's defense or um, or rose's scoring and playmaking I'm not entirely sure. I still had Rose. Um, okay. How about? I think I think Mitchell's better than Rose. I also kind of like Jerry Sloan too. Well, let's let's. What do you have? Um. So I I had the run of shooting guards. I have of Paul Pressey down to Brian Winter, then mm-hmm. Rose, um, then Mitchell. But I think in these five guys. They're all situationally very good. Like mm. Sloan is Sloan is an awesome defensive player. Or how many all defensive teams do we have? I, Six of I, them. Yeah. Um. And maybe maybe you should even be above Don Buse because they talk about Buse being in like Sloan of the ABA. But Sloan's playing forty minutes a night in the seventy five Western Conference Finals. He picks up an MVP vote in 72. It's a single vote. It's not great. Um, but like Chicago was an expansion team in 66. Sloan's an all-star in 67 and 69. And the team starts making the playoffs behind him, Bob Love, Chet Walker, like uh, Bob Boozer. Like, I don't know. I, I think that's a pretty quick turnaround. He's one of the main guys. I could see him versus Jalen Rose. Like it's about equal on my part. If we were to be Seth part now type cowards and just do tiers, <laughs> all five of these guys are the same tiers. Seth part now this. Okay. Let's um, well, who's your call then? Just we'll make, we'll make it. We'll move on. Um, Paul Pressey. All right. Paul Pressey has Pressey. a really great season. There's one season. Where he's like, you'll find it. You'll, you'll mention it. Go ahead. I don't know if I will. I mean, he gets MVP votes in 85 and 86. His three-year peak does not sound that impressive. It's 85 to 87. 15 points, seven assists, five rebounds. But he's super versatile. He is Mm -hmm. like does a little bit of everything. Three all-defensive teams, uh, you know, all-defensive first team in 85 uh, and 86, second team in 87. Like it's, it's Moncrief and Terry Cummings ahead of him. But then he's he's just let me do a little bit of everything. Let me be everywhere. Finds a way to he always finds a way to make an impact. He does. He does. It's his 85 season, by the way. It's his first team on defense, third and deep play, 16 a night, five rebounds, seven assists, 52% shooting. It's just he's part he's not perfect necessarily, but has no weaknesses, which is really important for a guy this caliber. Yeah. Um, and, and I, I notated his 85 playoffs, where over the 85 playoffs, he's averaging 16 points, seven and a half boards, nine assists. But like each game is also just really special. It's 17, 10, and eight, 16, nine, and 11. And then game four, where they need more scoring, it's 25, four, and four. Just, you know, it could impact you in a number of ways. After that, do you want to go Rose and then Sloan? Let's do Sloan and then Rose. Okay. 
So then I would really, I want Bill Bradley to make this. I guess he'll make the top 500, but I just, he led the finals in the scoring. Like, I just feel like he should get on here. Is that what we love about Bill Bradley? I was looking at him again. And I just, I, I didn't see, it. I didn't feel it. Talk to me about Bill Bradley. This was your guy, dude. <laughs> Bill Bradley is never been my guy. No, you go watch the small forwards podcast. You started with Bill Bradley, and I was like, oh, wow, that's interesting. I, I think you get it's like the me. same, it's the same case. It's it's efficient scoring, it's versatility, um, it's playing in 17 playoff series, it's averaging 19 a night on 40 minutes a game in the 73 finals, 40 minutes a game in the 72 finals, 36 minutes a game in the 70 finals. Um He's he's a big part of these really great teams. He's very highly regarded as just like he did everything. He moved off ball. He could, could facilitate. He played good defense. Like he should be on here. Yeah, it does sound like me. Yeah, all right. Let's let's get let's get Bo Bradley on here. Okay, but Mitchell is also a small for it, isn't he? Mike Mitchell, yeah, yeah. So he would have to do Mitchell then. Are you going to do Bradley first? Where did did Mitchell? We put Mitchell in at three ninety. Yeah, we did Mitchell, Pressy, Sloan, Rose. Gotcha. I'm okay if we want to go uh, Bradley over Mitchell. I think you can make the case that Bradley playing behind a lot of guys would have had higher numbers. Yeah, let's do that. So Mitchell's now three ninety five. Yeah, just go ahead. All right. Wait, do you want to drop them all the way down to 395? Yes. We don't even have a 394. <laughs> that was Bradley. Wait, oh no, sorry, wait, wait, wait. No. Coleman's still on the way. All right. Cool. Yeah. Move all right. that. All fix right. that. So we've got 394 as Mike Mitchell. Hmm. Any interest in Andrew Bynum or Andrew Bogut? My Andrews. Andrew Bynum. I I can't believe you come around on Andrew Bynum. Andrew Bynum's insane. <laughs> Andrew Bynum is an insane just, person. Just because he clobbered JJ Iberea in the air, uh, completely uncalled for, or one of the most dirtbaggy moves I've ever seen. Yeah, you know. He also had like an 18 and 12 season with second team all NBA. Was yeah, he was like the center up next. I mean, he was the best center behind Howard, basically. Um, yeah, I wish he plays in a lot of playoff series, he doesn't really play much in them. Um, I mean, he wins the two championships. Let's see, who, who do we have? Who else do we have? So now it's like Nick Van Exel's back, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I will say, as a Lakers fan, I want Bynum over Nick Van Exel. I feel like so. Calvo Jones maybe Dallas fans there. can push back on that. Calvo Jones is still there. Well, what you give with Jones, and what you give with Jones is you get these two ABA seasons where it's like there's no setters in this league, and he is crazy good, block titles, whatnot. And then he joins the NBA and just plays defense and grabs rebounds for a thousand games. He's six point seven boards in a block and a half. Um, over from 1977 to 1990. He's one of the last ABA guys. I think uh, Moses is the last one, but he hangs on for quite some time. Um, 27 playoff series played in. He, he is the starting center, 30 minutes a night, and three finals. Um, notably, they were placed by Moses Blown, but I still feel like he, he served a good role and, and played it well for a really long time. And I prefer that to Bynum still. We had that originally, and I'd like to keep it that way. All right, I, I can live with that. If we lock him in at three ninety five, now how do we feel about buying him? You know what? I, I'm actually gonna I'm gonna rescind my buying him. Good kidding. idea. Um, good idea. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> it's an excellent take at this point. Um, be, That's just just looking across the board, looking at the other names we have out here. I do think we're going to get to the point where I think Kidu Turgaloo should be over by him. Um, yeah. I also think Kidu should be behind Greg Winters, maybe not Jeff Petrie. The, um, but I think we've got some other names out here. Uh, yeah, I'd much rather have Bynum than Bob Kaufman. That's not saying a ton. 
Mm -hmm. I would rather have. I've got a lot of crossing streams here because, like, I'd rather have Connie Simmons than Jack Coleman, <laughs> but I'd rather so have Bynum do. than Kaufman. Um, I, I'm still, I guess, I guess I'm just still most interested in Brian Winters then, and then maybe I know Tom Meshery was my guy, pushing mm -hmm. Tom Meshery back, getting Chuck and getting Hedu off the board. Let's do that. Let's do that. Whatever you just said, I'm in. Brian Winters. <laughs> yeah. All right. What even number is this? This is 396. Um, we got to talk about these guys. We can't just throw them on there. This is not just a you know, freaking Excel spreadsheet exercise. Brian Winters is the best pure shooter in the NBA. So says Michael Jordan. Uh, from 75 to 83, he is a two-time All-Star uh, in 76 and 78. From 76 to 79, it is 19 points and seven assists per game. He is one of the centerpieces in the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar trade. Really, the, the Bucks got a lot of good pieces off of that. Um, but, you know, his two-playoff series, he's uh, with, with Milwaukee's averaging over 27 points per game. I think, I think he could have been an awesome piece on a title team. Uh, and as is, he's a very helpful piece on a lot of good teams. And I think that's, that's worthwhile. Yeah, absolutely. I think you get some just some really efficient scoring, and you see the impact on, on keeping the the Bucks competitive after Kareem leaves. Uh, with Person, you get some high volume scoring seasons against super efficient uh, for a guy taking a lot of threes, effective field goal percentage of fifty percent, which is the first time we've ever mentioned that stat on this podcast. Um, that, that keeps track of uh, considering that three pointers are more than two pointers are worth more. It is just your field goal percentage. Um, and Reggie Miller, it's like him and Reggie kind of running like 1A, 1B offenses, basically, throughout their early mm -hmm. years in Indiana. Um, I mean, person's taking 15, 16, 17, 18 shots a night. And I think Reggie, you know Reggie, people recognize Reggie Miller, but he really, every point of his career, there's someone else taking the same offensive volume every time. And early on, if you go back and read, Pacer season previews, whatnot. Chuck is described as being 1A. Like, Chuck is their go-to player in the clutch. He's the guy that they give the ball to to create his own basket. Now, Indiana moves off of him, and Reggie uh, ascends past him and rather quickly. So I'm not saying this is, like, always or a long-term thing. But, like, Chuck was their guy. Um, wasn't always loved. There are a good number of quotes about how his teammates didn't always like him. but. He was, the, he was the star of the team, uh, and he later in his career kind of figures it out of how to be not a star and just be a really nice complimentary piece. Uh, was was he good to play with uh, San Antonio? Am I remembering this correctly? Yeah, just go to San Antonio. Good call. Yeah, he um... gets uh, six man of the year votes, doesn't win the award, but third place in 95. Yeah, that's a great call. I'll, I'll talk about. Uh, but I'll talk about Turkaloo. Um, this is a really versatile kind of small forward, power forward. He's six ten, so there's there's that. I really want to talk about the 09 playoff run. The Magic figure positionless basketball out again. The the eighty one Kansas City Kings did it and then forgot about it, and then the 09 Magic did it and they forgot about it. And like someone needs to just start writing these things down. Um, Jaren Nelson gets hurt, and while he's their all star guard. What the Magic then do, and it's like, all right, Turkaloo and Richard Lewis are going to have like a lot of ball handling responsibilities around Dwight Howard. And during that playoff run, he's 16 points, he's five assists, he's four and a half boards, he's shooting 49% from three. The Magic piece together this elite shooting team with offensive versatility and makes up for Howard's lack of offensive uh, versatility. Because while Howard's like a very efficient scorer, like, you know, you don't really want him with the ball all the time. Like he can't really create mm -hmm. for himself as well. His post moves aren't very good. He's not a good free throw shooter. And so all of a sudden you have all these shooters to worry about and everyone can put the ball on the ground and everyone can get their own bucket. And Howard becomes more dangerous. He's let Howard anchor the defense. All of a sudden you're in the finals. Circle is a big part of that. Also fun little tidbit of information. 
Do you know what awards he received votes for in 2009? Uh, I have no idea. I know he won a most improved, but that's that's all I have for his overall That's a wait. That's a wait. In 09, just just guess what what voters felt like he might deserve votes for. I feel like this has to be insane, given why. Because if it's MVP, you would just say that. If it's all NBA, you would just say that. But it's not, because it's Defensive Player of the Year, isn't it? It's Defensive Player of the Year. That's, <laughs> <laughs> my goodness. Wow. Hey, good for Which, you, though. To be fair, to be fair, it, it's a, it's... It's one vote. It's like one fifth or third. I, I forget how many they do. I think they only do three uh, places for a deep boy. Um, it's the same number that Ronnie Turrio got, which is just hilarious. It's 36 year old Grant Hill got a vote. We really got to, we got to rein in whoever's voting for deep boy. Um, well, it used to just be are, you are get ridiculous. a first place vote. It's like, who's the deep boy? You write a name in, and that's who gets, that's who wins the award. And mm -hmm. they, they did that until 03, and then they like everyone gets a vote. It's a one through fifth place vote. It's crazy ballots. You see stuff like that. Yeah. Um, all right. I'm totally down. I think everything you said about Hidu is really great. I do think it's funny that we have Hidu here. Um, and Jameer Nelson, uh, who is our point guard 95. Now, like mm -hmm. we've got we got a lot more point guards off the board than we do small forwards. If Jameer had been healthy, I think I think we never get to see the Hidu rise. Um, and we probably flip flop those guys. But it, it it's yeah. just an interesting sliding doors moment. The second thing that I'd like to acknowledge is I started this section of the pod off by saying Doc Rivers will be guy 400. By locking in Hidu Turgalo, 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 ah, Turgalo. at 398, we still have two point guards above Doc Rivers. Yeah. We're safe. We're safe. Doc will not be Mr. Who's 400. The two, who's the two above him? We still have Nick Van Exel, who is kind of free-falling. Right. I wouldn't Nick hate Van Nick at, at, at in this range. There's a couple mm -hmm. names I'd rather have, but I don't hate it anymore. Um, and Johnny Moore, who we might have over yeah. a little bit. You know who, you know, well, let me check my stick out real quick. Oh, that was your guy. <laughs> Johnny Moore was your dude. <laughs> Show me no, these you... sticky notes. Show <laughs> you... me these sticky notes. <laughs> you brought up no. I I think I, I like Moore. He has a really impressive playoff run. I'm just I didn't know about that until you had mentioned it, so it stuck with me. Um let's do right. okay, how about okay. Can I ask you who your two favorite guys are on this board? Because I've got two. Man, Jack Coleman and Nikki John Nikki Johnson. No, neither of those guys. All right, what do you got? Uh, Jeff Petrie, and uh, where is he? Mike Thompson. Are you pulling Thompson up? That's I'm pulling cheap. Thompson up. How am I supposed to, I was supposed to guess that? I just Whoa. asked you to name. <laughs> the two favorite players on this board if you're you know i feel like i'm I, fucking walter from from the dude from the big lebowski so i don't give a shit about the rules anymore <laughs> who was on the line wrong, Market walter, zero. just an asshole <laughs> <laughs> Market zero pulling guys yeah. up way down on this list i i like i like michael thompson and i do think we were too harsh on him you get some some genuine like 20 and 10, you know, 15 and eight years with Portland. And then he transitions into like Kareem's backup, which he was way overqualified to be. Um, mm -hmm. You know what? Well, let's do it. Jeff Petrie and Michael Thompson. You want to do Thompson first, even I'll do it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and Petrie, he made my uh, top careers diminished or ruined by injuries. He's just tearing his ACL. Um, but before then, he is Mr. Blazer, the first guy. He's got seven seasons there, which if the team was winning, all would have been all-star seasons, or at least you know three or four of them would be, as opposed to, what was it, just two. Um, a, a great scorer, passer, playmaker, and his teammates fall on the sword and basically say, we let Jeff down. 
if we were better, we would have won. This is no, no knock on Jeff. So I, I think that's, um, that's cool in my mind. We did it. That's 400 people. I'm going to read them right now. All 400? Yes. No. We started off at uh, <laughs> with Zajuna Sogalskis at 376, and Frankie Bryan, Ralph Beard, Bob Boozer. 380 was Don Ole, Don Boos, Brian Teller, Bill Melcioni, AC Green, Al Servi, Buddy Jeanette, Kelly Tripuga, Ricky Pierce, John Starks, the 390s, Paul Pressey, then Jerry Sloan, Jalen Rose, Bill Bradley, Mike Mitchell, Caldwell Jones, Brian Winters, Chuck Person, Hito Turkaloo, Michael Thompson, and number 400 is Jeff Petrie. Nay, we survived Doc Rivers. We survived Doc Rivers. And I think what's really interesting, we discussed this a little bit ago, um, it, it's kind of the positional drift, or not, not drift, but just um, we have ranked 87 point guards. We have ranked 84 shooting guards. We have ranked 80 small forwards, 79 power forwards, and just 70 centers. Center being probably the most pivotal position in the NBA, but also a position that you can get away with not being as athletic. You can maybe have a little bit longer lasting career and a, a position where there's a sizable drop from being like a really good seven footer to just being a seven footer in the league. Um, mm -hmm. I, I didn't expect it to be this stark this early, but I think we're going to start running out of point guards before we hit 450 which is not something I planned for. Yeah, I did not I did not see that coming either. And so I might have to brainstorm some guys, maybe come up with that off the pod, come with it, come back yeah. with it, and then uh, think, and we'll get that done for sure. But 500 is well on its way. Um, I start school on Monday, but I will make time. We will make time. We will do Good. this. And on top of that, Nate is uh, becoming a father. Congratulations, yeah. Nate. So very mm -hmm. extremely exciting stuff going on in the Schwartz household. Um, but most importantly, making these lists. Um. <laughs> Can I just say how weird it is? Uh, I had I relinquished control of the pod. That's so that way you and Dylan can figure out what works for you, and I'll make it when I make it. Um, but I'm in this pre-paternity mode where my wife, if and I, the kid is due September 3rd. But statistically could be any day right yeah statistically he could be like a week late uh he could be right now i keep my phone where i can see it in case my wife texts me hey i've started to go into labor can you stop podcasting and <laughs> do husbandly duties now and you'd be like uh, uh no one second actually just finishing this podcast <laughs> really gotta really gotta purse the difference between brian winners and uh chuck persons uh -huh. so yeah uh, pre paternity is an interesting place to be at. I bet. Yeah. We're excited my boss for you. asked my boss asked me if I could come to a meeting on Tuesday, and I was like, maybe. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Might have a kid. Well, you left for a minute and we put LeBron 13th of uh overall for next season. So the the chains yeah. are off us, baby. <laughs> Fuck the Lakers. <laughs> the Fuck the Lakers. Fuck the magic. Fuck yeah. 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 Fucking Orlando, All right. dude. I'm gonna go Aaron, going back on Twitter after this. Come get some Orlando Magic fans. <laughs> Other than Twitter, where can the people find you? <laughs> Possible chairs on TikTok, possible chairs on Twitter, where I fight Orlando Magic fans. My cameo where you can pay me to make videos and I, I do them instantaneously. And then uh, the my Patreon, you can find this list, other write-ups, and then the Hoop Simple podcast every other week with me and Dylan making uh, some preseason predictions, doing the top 100 players of this season, all great stuff. Find me here. Find me on TikTok, Nate underscore Hoops Temple. And you can email the whole show, hoopstemple at gmail.com. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you for listening and check us out uh, wherever you get podcasts.